You know, I, I love the fact that you're bringing this to the sports element because I think that we're, when we take a step back from card games, I think this lo- this is the overwhelming use of analytics and data in competitive everything right i think what the reason why we're talking we're having this discussion is because of all the data that's available and when you look at sports let's talk about football and basketball for a second and how they're adopting this mindset oh yeah basketball has changed because of the high rolling mindset i would argue that people have the same mindset in sports using analytics as the Viper uh, Hearthstone player we were talking about. So I don't know how old the Viper guy is, mm-hmm. and this is by no means disrespectful because I, I would just fair to say I'm older than him mm-hmm. by, <laughs> by at least probably somewhere in a, in a decade fashion. But I joke about this with my one of my best friends, Christian, and Christian's uh, he's in his mid twenties, right? Mm-hmm. So I and I feel like I don't know why, but I feel like every middle schooler to young adult all like Steph Curry, <laughs> Patrick Mahomes, like they all floss dance. They all have this same like like mentality and they yes. do it, it's like the TikTok like mentality and I'm yeah. not dissing on any of those things cuz I I'm like I'm I guess I'm like a boomer compared to them even though I'm not a boomer, but I'm the mid I'm the mid-range boomer. Uh John John boomer. <laughs> But the, the that mentality is like, uh, you know, shoot the threes. And, and that's not to say, but you can obviously blow anybody out. It, it, any team that hits the percentage of threes that they do, yeah. they can win. Yeah. I mean, the Bucks were doing it just a couple of years, you know, just a couple of years ago or a year ago. Mm-hmm. They were the number one three-point team. And even when the Cavs were like, you knew they probably weren't going to beat there, they were one of the highest scoring three-point teams. That's why they kept winning. Yep. And... You look at these teams who could hit the three, but then ultimately what happened? What ended up winning all these championships outside of just the blowouts? It was defense. It was defense and having LeBron that can slow the game down and control the game. Yeah, and I, <laughs> I don't want to get into the fact of, like, the Warriors beat LeBron and all this. Yeah. I'm just like, I'm like, first off, it was never it was never fair. A lot of a lot of things had to go right for both the championships, for both the teams. It would If we could go back and have a full-strength championship – it's hard to argue against LeBron, man. It's it's hard. It's you know? hard, but like the best when the Warriors impressed me is when uh, the I believe it's the Rockets. No, it was the o- OKC. When OKC was just blow. I mean, I I thought OKC was the best team in the league that year. Mm-hmm. That they were three when they were up three one up yep. on the Golden State Warriors. Steph Curry did not want any piece of Russell Westbrook. That was like I mean he was just unbeat. Like he was just so good. Yeah. But then obviously. What does Russ do? He turns back into Russell Westbrick. And then, you know, <laughs> yeah. Kevin Durant, the greatest shooter of all time, mysteriously went cold and mm-hmm. joined the Golden State Warriors the next year. But, you know, I won't say that that, that was a thing. But um, the Warriors withstood it. Clay got hot, and then they started controlling the game. Mm-hmm. And obviously, Clay had to have, like, one of the greatest performances of all time and mm-hmm. broke the record and all that stuff. But the Golden State Warriors while they could just beat you at any point in time, they were a really great defensive team. Oh, yeah. Clay, top can, two, top two in the league at what he lock did. You down, man. Lock you, in. you had Iguodala. You had uh, Draymond Green. Uh, uh, oh, uh, but but when, the, when that team was rolling, they were a mm-hmm. great defensive team, and that allowed Steph to do what Steph did, and yeah. then Clay feed, you know, fed off that, and their bench was ultra deep at that time. And, again... While some people look at, if you want to reference that into like gaming, you're like, oh, that's an aggro deck. No, 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 no. That's an aggro. That's an aggro. Te- that's a tempo deck in disguise. Yeah. And then you go back and look at Jordan's Bulls, any of his Bulls teams that were a championship team. Yeah, the Last that, Dance going on right now. Yeah. Oh, so good. But Jordan could just, you know, shoot you out the door. But then. They had Scotty and Jordan on their team that could who could just lock you down. And Rodman and Longley and Ron Harper. <laughs> yeah. Look at the Shaq Kobe Lakers. Two guys that can go give you 40. Yeah. But two ultra – Kobe's one of the greatest defensive players of all time. Shaq, the most dominant force within a certain stretch of all time. You look at those players, and then you obviously have your role pieces. And And – and I don't want to get too much in the deck building, but I will say this: like when I build Magic decks, I build. I think about sports teams. Like I always think I want my deck to be the New England Patriots, 
the the best Lakers team, the Chicago Bulls. I want it to be the the mm-hmm. top tier Miami Heat team that won the two titles. Like yeah. you know, we can blow you out the gate or we can control the game mm-hmm. and we have the where we're just never out of it. Mm-hmm. That, that and that's to me the best decks. Now, mm-hmm. do those decks always win? No, but if you look at it, ultimately those decks provide the most consistency over time because they have the ability to pivot. Yeah. And I don't know if that's true for every card game, yeah. but at least for Magic and Yu Gi Oh, it provided to be true. And the mindset of like players, it's like who cares what my what another player's mindset is? It what another player thinks. Mm-hmm. And what they do personally for themselves and how they play a game is none of your business. I always like to tell people, that person's opinion about you, it's none of your business. Hmm. That's their personal feeling for themselves. Now, you don't have to agree with it. Totally fine. You have your own personal thing. They could literally think the opposite about you and just think you're you're toxic to the environment because all you care about is win, 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 win. 